I'm Christine, and I've got some great drawing and painting ideas to share with you today. Let's get started. Today's project starts with a leftover from my class demo. In its previous life, this piece was a letter C from one of my watercolor tie-dye letters painting classes, but I found it on its side in a pile of clutter when I was doing some cleaning in my studio, and I thought, wow, what a great chicken. Must be crazy, right? Nope. Actually, I'm just pretty good at remembering how to be a kid looking for shapes in the clouds. And while your first thought may be that I'm a daydreaming silly, what if it just means that I'm creative? And then I can show you, or probably just remind you, how you can be creative too. So, first off, you probably don't already have a letter C painted on watercolor paper laying around your house somewhere. So, pause this video and make yourself one. It does not need to look exactly like mine. Um, actually, this video is meant to show you the process so you can find your own shapes and make mixed media magic on your own anytime you want to. So, for now, just get something close to that letter C shape and let me show you how to take it from there to a colorful and happy finished piece of original artwork. So, the supplies I'm going to be using today are really pretty basic and easy. I've got some ultra fine point sharpie markers in different colors and I've got these brush markers um, right here and then I have these Tombow dual brush pens that are my favorite. I love them and they have a, a blending stick that comes with them too. Then I got all these different things. There's a gray and a sepia colored brush pen or brush marker and um, I've got pencils. Um, I've got jelly roll pens of all different kinds. I've got a whole bag of miscellaneous stuff here. These Micron pens are one of my favorites. I use them all the time and a whole lot. They come in all different sizes. Um, they're, you know, archival inks and they're easy to find in the store and um, add a, a lot of versatility to what you're working on. Um, I've got blending stuff, stumps, and everything you can think of. So let me go ahead and start pulling everything out here so I can have things um, easy to reach. Now, I don't want you to start drawing with a pencil thinking that you're going to take your pen and go over it. Rather, just go ahead and get a pen. And I'm going to take one that's uh, kind of in the middle size-wise right here. And um, I want you to just go ahead and be bold and commit to this and, and just start making lines on there. Um, let's, I'm going to start with this wing shape and then I'm going to probably put, let's put some tail feathers coming up around this way and I'm going to just really just start drawing in here. Um, well, I, I just take a look at it and then I kind of visualize that chicken that I saw when I first looked at the paper laying in that stack of clutter and I just start trying to put in some of that shape that I uh, saw in my mind's eye. I also have a reference photo of a rooster laying over here on my desk somewhere. It's just an ordinary rooster, but it's a pretty one. So um, I can look at that for reference if I need to. Now I'm just gonna put this shape of the neck in here and then I'm gonna start getting um, the comb put in place here and uh, I just, kind of look at things and visualize what I might want to be and then I just start throwing lines in everywhere. And this is the famous big mouth chicken. <laughs> but really the, the paint was there so that's where I put the beak. And I like it like that. I'm going to just darken and thicken up some of these lines. And just keep drawing in there what I'm seeing in my imagination and, and uh, coloring and drawing and coloring and just uh, throwing in there what whatever looks fun and good like I'm enhancing some of this yellow color right here but I'm not going to color the whole thing yellow but I mostly I just pick up pens and start marking in there and then I'm using the blending pen to, to blend and I'm just in the zone here just having fun drawing and coloring and 
and enhancing what I see in the paint that was already there and changing some stuff to be more like what I would like it to look like. And I'm just uh, fancying this little guy right up with, with paint and markers. If you wanted, you could throw in some colored pencil. And also, sometimes I get a line in there that I didn't really like. Well, I just have to leave it in there. Sometimes I can go back and change it. Other times I'm married to it and it, it's just a piece of my artwork now. And it's not something to be uh, worried and stressed about. Just color over it. Find some way to turn it into some part of your art. Now I'm using this blending pen here to, to kind of move that pigment around from the watercolor paint to get some subtle uh, feather shapes going on there. but. I think they're too subtle. So I'm gonna draw them in with a, one of my really fine, ultra fine point microns. Like that. Now let's put some more wing feathers in. And he needs some feet. I did draw the feet in with pencil and then I'm going over those, but that's because the feet were a little hard for me to figure out exactly how do I want this strutting guy looking here. Um, so that's a time when I, I would go ahead and draw with pencil. Now I'm putting some extra color in here and blending it, making this pretty. And now I'm gonna clean things up a little bit, show you how to do that. Um, you just, if you got paint where you didn't want it to be, you just get a clean brush and clean water and just gently rub back and forth with that brush, but you don't scrub and you don't push real hard and like dig into the paper. You don't want to damage the paper. So be gentle with it and just keep remembering, clean water, dab it on your paper towel to take the excess out and then just gently rub it back and forth there and just lift that paint back up off the paper from where you don't want it. And you might have to do that a time or two to get it all the way back to the uh, white that you like. But it's really very easy and that's your watercolor eraser. It's just a clean brush with clean water. And don't forget to dab it on your paper towel to clean it off in between strokes so that you're cleaning that, that pigment that you're lifting off the paper. You wipe that off in the paper towel. Okay, now let's get back to coloring. And I'm gonna color these feet in and then I'm gonna use the blending stick and just kind of blend those colors together there and um, make some feet that I like the look of. You can use that blending stick in a lot of ways. It blends the colors together, it moves the paint around, and also you can use it a little bit for um, actually picking up some paint or marker that's where you don't want it. So now I'm gonna put some nice color in the tail and I'm just gonna be throwing color in there and then using that blending stick, to, like I said, move the uh, ink or the paint around uh, to different areas and put some texture in with some lines and dots and stuff. And I'm just throwing color in, uh, making it up as I go and making it pretty. It's kind of like doodling. I am referring a little bit back to my reference photo for the sort of shape and colors that I want to put into these tail feathers, but I'm really just making what's on my paper look in a way that I think is pretty. I'm not trying to be realistic by any means. Just keep going till I've got this looking um, like I like it and got enough color on here. And, then, and don't forget, use that blending pen if you get those Tombow markers. It's really great. It's fun to work with. to 
shift gears here. So that looks pretty good for now. Now it's the next day in the afternoon and my lighting is a little bit different. Um, not quite what I would want it to be, but I think you can still see what I'm doing. Um, I needed to come up with an idea for what to do with that purple line sticking right up there. And I started thinking about where this chicken might be and I was reminded of the chickens I saw running around in the street when I was down in Key West a couple months ago with my family. And I think I'm gonna put this cute little guy into a scene that might be somewhere in Key West. I've started with this umbrella because it does rain a lot in South Florida right along with the, all our beautiful sunshine. So I thought an umbrella would be a, a good choice to, to go with for that line that just coincidentally was there in my original uh, piece of painted stuff. Now, um, I'm just throwing some color in here. Like I said, I'm making this up as I go. I have no idea if there's an umbrella somewhere that looks like this, but I don't care. I'm making up my own umbrella and making it pretty. And, and that's what counts. Is it, do I think it's pretty? Because this is my painting and my artwork. So, um, you know, nobody can come look over my shoulder and say, oh, I think you're doing that wrong. I will tell them to go away. I think this looks good. It's pretty. I'm going to doctor it all up though a little bit. Um, and we need some sunshine. I'm getting a little bit of yellow and mix it into some of the stuff that I call the leavings on my paint palette there. It's a uh, perfect blend of a uh, mishmash of, of colors so that I got something that's not all um, one consistent color. I like the color variations going on. Now I'm going to mix up some blue here and use it to spatter on and kind of make the indication of some rain. I'm mixing some uh, color that's called cobalt turquoise with my other darker blue and I like the way it looks. To me it's just a very happy South Florida color. So I'm going to scoop up a lot of paint here and See if I can't uh, get a lot of spatter going on and I'm going to hit it with my spray bottle here. This is a really fine misting version of my spray bottle and it's going to help make this color move around a little bit and do what I call watercolor magic things. And um, I like to shake it around and knock it on the table. Now. I got a little bit, a lot of, a little bit too much water right in that one spot. It's making the paper warp up a little bit, which was making all the paint want to run off the top of the page. So I'm holding it down there a little bit and uh, clean up that little part I didn't like, and then just hold it up and kind of shift it around a little till that paint gets kind of about where I like it to be and has a chance to kind of soak into the page. Now, um, I think I want to see this tail do some of that um, running and um, unexpected stuff that it, that it will do when you spray it, get it wet, and then knock it around a little like this. Uh, I, I like the unexpected things that happen. I think it's pretty. It's part of watercolor, and to me that's some of what I like. Um, that shouldn't stick down quite so much there. Touch his head. I don't want it to do that, so I'll just... Uh, blot that right off with a paper towel. Oops, I missed these fringes, so I'll fix those. Um, but I, I really like that little purple part hanging down out of the umbrella, but let me fix this part where this part, was the stick was sticking up too much into my umbrella. So I just dabbed a little extra blue on there, and that will spread out on its own and, and get looking right. Now, that purple part that's hanging down, I like it, but I don't want it to be by itself, so I'm gonna add a little more, um, another, try to make another one of those by adding some pink right up here, and a little spatter, and then hit that with the, um, the spray bottle, and try to knock it down, and it's not going. I'm gonna have to blow on it, I think. Yep, that, that fixed it. Now I can just blow on it and kinda direct that paint to get back where I want it to go. I like how that looks. That looks pretty good. 
now. Um, let's see. Let's mix up this blue again. He, he's, he, he's not floating in the air, he's walking. And if he's in Key West, in, walking in the street, I'm gonna just assume that the street is all wet and has puddles on it. So let me uh, just paint some watery stuff puddling up in the street for him to be walking or strutting through. I like that. Now he's strutting down the wet street in Key West. So. Um, let's work on lightening up this beak. I got it too dark and I don't like it and I tried to lift the uh, paint back up out of there by doing the wet brush thing and here I'm going to show you I'm trying to do it again but I put that that color on there with uh, the markers and it's just not wanting to lift off to get back as light as I wanted it and if I really kept working on it I would start to make my paper really mess up it's already I've worked on it a little too much and it's already starting to peel a little bit and I don't want to keep making that happen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white well I was gonna get white gesso but I can't find mine right now so I've got some white acrylic and as soon as I can get this off of here as good as I can. Uh, I'm going to dry it with a paper towel, just uh, blotting it. I'm, I'm not going to rub or scrub on it at all. I just want to put the towel on it straight on there and press down on it, straight down. No rubbing it back and forth at all. I'm going to shift to another dry spot on that same towel and blot again to get enough, uh, to get as much of that moisture out of there as I can. Now it still feels cold, so that means it's still too wet to paint on. So I'm going to do a couple other things in different spots on the paper while I wait for that area to dry. I'm just going to take this orange marker and, and um, add some more color to the sun up here. Um, oops, I forgot to put it in the frame. Sorry about that. But now, um, let me take my uh, acrylic paintbrush and stick it in my white acrylic and get a little bit on there and spread that out a little. And then I'm going to uh, swish that brush around in the water and I'm going to use that wet brush, um, which I did dab the, some of the excess off so it's not dripping. But I'm going to use that wet brush to spread that white paint out over the area that is darker than I wanted it to be. And um, what that's going to do, it's going to allow me to cover this area up and then let it dry and then come back in and rework it uh, without damaging the paper anymore. Um, when you do this with gesso and you use a wet brush like this, you can spread it over that and then you let it dry completely thoroughly before you paint on it again. But you can do this and then you can come back and paint on it uh, with your watercolor and it, that area will take the paint almost exactly like the, the clean paper does. So you won't have a strange spot there. I'm having a little bit of peeling going on, but I think I can get enough paint smeared on here with this wet brush to, um, to fix it right, and then I'll knock those little pills off when they're dry. And this will have to dry completely before I can come back in and paint over it. I'm going to put some yellow on it and make his beak a, a lighter color because I just decided I didn't like that dark that I put on there. But this is one of the ways that I was telling you uh, that you can fix things so you don't have to be all that worried about, um, about committing to just go ahead and start making marks and putting paint and stuff on there because if you really really don't like something that you put on there there are ways of going back and fixing it like paint over it with this white paint and let that dry and go again but most of the time you're gonna find that you're um, very happy with the lines you put down there because you're just letting yourself be free and and express yourself what's in your mind's eye um, will just come out onto your paper 
um, with your pens and stuff, and, and you'll be very happy with it. So I've got to get the last little bits of this on here. Once I've got enough on there, um, then I'm going to work on a different area and let this dry, because like I said, I can't paint over it until it's completely dry. can see what I did there okay now if this guy was in Key West walking on the street what else would be there there'd be flowers probably maybe a bicycle probably a picket fence somewhere in there so I'm gonna put some a little pot of flowers uh, right on the side and I sprayed some water on the paper and now I'm gonna um, spatter some paint into that area where I already spritzed it with water and it's going to just start spreading out and making these little shapes on there and um, let me just go ahead and touch the brush right down onto that wet paper and it was not solidly wet it was just sprayed so there are water droplets on there and the paint hits those water droplets and and spreads out in shapes that make really nice flowers so um, I'm going to make a terracotta pot here for those things to be sitting in. And I think they might be geraniums. I don't know. I don't really have a plan for that. I'm just putting stuff on there. But I think this looks really pretty. Now we need some grass or sidewalk or something over there for that um, flower pot to be sitting on. Uh, on on the side of the street. So I'm just dabbing some green color in and little bits of brown. And remember it's all really wet so I just touch the brush to it and the paint starts uh, spreading and, and you know does watercolor magic things. So here's, um, here's some curb on the side there and um, let's go ahead and put in a picket fence back there behind him. And I'm not trying to paint this really exact. I'm just quickly throwing this stuff in there and um, till it's all said and done, till I'm done putting some more definition with the marker or something, it's going to look pretty good. Now I'm going to take this Sharpie and start putting some flower shapes and some, some petals and some centers of flowers, but I'm not trying to draw exactly. Um, this area is still too wet, so it's not taking the ink from the marker too good, at least not that one. Let me try this marker. It's a little better. But anyway, you don't want to draw every single petal. Just put the indication of some stuff in here and there. It's, I think it's still too wet. Um, so let me work on a different area and come back to that in a minute. You, you can't really um, use the marker on an area that's still wet paint. It, the marker won't write on it and in some cases you'll ruin your marker where it won't write on anything anymore. So try to remember to let it dry before you start coloring on, an, on any area with your markers. Let's see, let's put some, a little bit of definition in here with this brush marker. I love these things. They're, they're um, water-based and completely blendable. So you can really uh, add a lot of good stuff to your paintings. Just touching these little things in here. Really just trying to give the indication that this is a picket fence. I'm not trying to draw a perfect one. I don't even really want it to be perfect. I'm going to use this blending pen and smudge these lines out um, really good here just so that it's not, um, not quite so defined and yeah, I don't want the focus to be on the fence. So I'm smudging things up pretty good here blending them out and blurring them a bit. But you can still see it's 
supposed to be, and it looks like a picket fence. I think I'm gonna try to put some more um, lines down in here because this is water. So, you know, I put symbols in my stuff. I'm not trying to draw this realistic, I'm just putting symbols. But now that I'm doing this, it kind of looks at like he's maybe walking across the top of the swimming pool. So, let me put some more lines that look a little bit more like puddles in here. So hopefully it'll look like puddles in the street. I don't, I don't really want to make a chicken that's walking on the water, really. But that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put some lines in here to more better define the curb and, um, and that sidewalk over there. And I'm gonna just put a little bit more lines in um, the flower pot and some more do some more work on the flower petals themselves here in a second. And don't forget to put in some leaves too. It's not just flower petals. You gotta have some leaves. Oh and right here some of my color got over in the on the chicken and I want the flowers to be behind the chicken so I'm cleaning that off again with just clear water on my brush and gently rubbing it back and forth there to lift that color up from where I don't want it. Let me get this color up off of here too because the, the chicken's in front of the flowers so I don't want the flowers to come all over on the chicken. But right here I got a little too much paint off so I'm going to actually use my blending pen to spread that color back out a little and blend that together better. And um, I, I love these blending pens for this. Cause that just moved all that stuff right back over and, and made that look good again. So there he is. He's looking pretty cute, I like him. Now, um, I, think the, I think the fence needs to come over in front of him. I don't like it just stopping over there. So I'm gonna use this brush marker and add some color there and then I'm going to take the blending pen again and spread that uh, pigment out here and just form some more boards for my picket fence. This is really fun kind of thing to work on. It can be very relaxing and then when you're done you have a piece of artwork. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Faded out like that. Now let's work on these flowers some more. just kind of look into the paint and it has dried um, lumpy is definitely not the right word uh, but but with there's variegated stuff going on there in these in where the paint has dried because it kind of moves around a little bit as it's drying and um, so I just look into the paint and I can actually see shapes in there. Um, my husband says he doesn't know what I'm talking about, but, but if you're working on this and you're looking at your piece, I'm sure you're going to see what I'm talking about. You just look into it and you can kind of see where um, the paint is just looking like, well, if I just enhance that right there, that would make a perfect leaf, that would make a perfect little... Um, little bud or something you know so just look through there and find where you want to put these shapes and change up which markers you're using so you get some um, so 
variation going on in there. And again, do not try to draw every single petal and every single leaf. That will actually not look good. It's better if you just put indications of things, leave some uh, areas with nothing drawn at all, just the paint to just kind of hint at what's there. And, and it'll look prettier. It, it may not, to you, to your mind, it may not look realistic, but we're not really trying to do realistic here, if you didn't notice that. This is fun and pretty. That's what we're working on. So um, don't overdo the drawing. I know I, it's easy to do. I'm a detail person, and I love those details. So sometimes I have a hard time stopping, too, but... But it's better if you can talk yourself into not overdoing the drawing. Put a couple more right up in here. I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to put a little bit of lines on my picket fence here. And I'm again using my smallest or most fine tipped uh, pen here. And I'm not going to draw every line. And I'm also, as you can see, I'm not using a ruler to try and keep them perfectly straight. I'm just throwing these lines in here and giving the indication. good. A few more over here. One all the way back into the distance behind him. Maybe one more in front of him. And I hope you enjoyed drawing and painting with me today. Please click like to let me know and also click subscribe so you can know when I posted something new to try. Leave me a comment uh, below if you have questions or if you want to request a specific subject or watercolor drawing project. And thanks for watching.